I will be uh, uh, very, very short introducing, I think, the, the first panel that is the, uh, uh, of, of the session today, which is a white paper that we are about to complete, will be uh, released at the end of this month. Uh, and we are uh, today uh, cooperating with uh, uh, Mind the Bridge and Italian Innovation Day. Uh, this is what uh, Marco was alluding to. The, we are Italians coming from different walks of life uh, that today share a common goal. So we put together this platform, which is called Why Italy Matters to the World, which is a, a very provo provocative title because you can easily answer it doesn't matter, but we, we believe it does. And, and to do that, we're going to do three things uh, uh, to constitute a platform. Uh, one of the paradox of our country is that though 85% is multimedia enterprise, there is no support for an export-led economy to penetrate and establish itself in the number one market of the world. Uh, we know that China is growing and India is growing, but this will remain, at least in our lifetime, the first market. So we need to be here. So the platform, which will be launched on May 5th, so we're going to have a twin event in New York, uh, will be constituted by three things. We're going to be launching the first web magazine uh, in English from Italy. As you know today, if you're not fluent in Italian and you want to know news about Italy, uh, you have to wait uh, international press. And you know our friends from Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, and they typically do a good job on the 4F uh, of Italy, which is food, fashion, uh, Ferrari, and I forgot the fourth, which is uh, furniture. Uh, that's what they do. Or they peak on our two Ds, which is the public debt and the north-south divide. Or even worse, they ca uh, keep on picking on us on the energy deficit that we have. Or uh, the other E is the tax evasion. These are all right things, but at the end of the day, if you recall, uh, by many, many international observers, Italy should be well in Chapter 11 today, according to their statistics. We're still alive. We still post the $1.8 trillion uh, economy. Uh, we are uh, the number two manufacturing shop in Europe, third after, if you put China in it. Uh, uh, the north, uh, in the center north, today is growing better than Germany itself. So there are many, many things which we will call pearls, and we will... Uh, uh, present in New York. So that's the first platform. The second is we're going to uh, uh, put this white paper out so we illustrate the thesis of why Italy matters, and we believe it is a good case. And the third is uh, an event like this one where we'll be presenting 12th to small to medium enterprise to the financial community in New York. So these two events, New York, uh, today San Francisco and New York May 5th, she will share the same logo, Italian Innovation Day, Why Italy Matters to the World. And, and all the uh, sponsors there will continue and sustain this. So, so we're very thrilled to be here. I think it's a, it's a great occasion. And it's something that our small to medium enter enterprise really deserves. So we're very honored to be here. Uh, one last note, when I started to think about and put our forces together, it reminds me when I was working in Greece uh, in the early 90s. And one day, so I made very good friends with this uh, Greek top manager. And one day I went uh, to him and I said, Kostas, I'm going to get married. So Kostas was a typical Greek, smoking. So he was in this cloud of smoke. So he went out from his cloud. He bring me under his shoulder. And I said, Fernando, let me give you some pills of wisdom. And I said, thank you, Kostas. And Kostas goes, you know why you get married the first time? I said, I don't know, Kostas. He says, lack of experience. I said, okay. And then he says, why you, know, you, you know why you get divorced? I said, no, Costas. He said, lack of patience. And then he says, you know why you get married the second time? And I said, no, Costas, lack of memory. So <laughs> when I started this, I think we need uh, a lot of uh, experience, patience, and memory to make the difference. And uh, enjoy the day, and thank you. Thank you, Fernando, for your piece of wisdom. So, you know. My name is Alberto Netti. I'm the chairman of uh, Mandibri Foundation, and I'm quite honored to be able to give you a preview of uh, the white paper that, together with Fernando Napolitano, that 
you have speak, speak before me, and uh, Richard Vieto for our business school. We are working on and will be presented and distributed uh, in New York on May 5th. So my goal is just to give you some highlights uh, of, on the work that we, we did and um, to find a button to click down, so maybe this one, okay. And then uh, in order to, to start the discussion. So first of all, uh, Italy, where are we? Italy, despite everything is told, uh, is still the seventh largest economy in the world. Maybe we can be a bit more prudent and see that it is the tenth, uh, looking at purchase power parity, but it's still important, it's still relevant. And second thing we can for sure say is Italy is and remains an export powerhouse. This is, I think, some positives we need to start with. Uh, later on, we'll, you will hear from startups, and uh, they will ask to present, and we ask them, them to, to start their presentation, their pitch from defining the problem they address. And so, what problem we have in Italy? I think we have two main problems. The first of all is that uh, Italy has grown slowly in the last uh, 10 years and has grown slower than uh, European neighbors like Germany, France, UK and slower than the EU average. I think if you can remember the number we're talking about 0.27 percent per year annually. The second problem that we have is that um, competitiveness has slipped down and uh, the productivity has turned from positive, that was uh, before 1995, into negative. And this is something that is not common for the euro area. So we have two problems, slow growth and a lack of competitiveness and productivity. Talking about unemployment, uh, the problem is not that bad compared to other European countries like Germany and France and more uh, if we compare to the US. But still, if you could take a look at the numbers of unemployment in Italy, we have two problems. First of all is that the participation rate is the second lowest in Europe. And this is due to the barriers there still are to women entering the labor market. And the second problem that we have is the early retirement for uh, people. And the second problem we have is that uh, unemployment is not that bad, but unemployment badly affects young people. These are two problems that we have. So we grow slowly and we lack, or still seems to lack, of competitiveness. Why, could you ask? Difficult to, to give factors, explanation about this. But I think that one problem we have is that uh, the real economies just contribute just to 17% to the GDP. The rest of contribution is mainly from services. This is the first problem that we have. And if we take a look at which are the main industry contributing to the GDP growth, take a look that uh, are mostly positioning on the right hand on the life cycle curve. So we're talking mostly about mature businesses. One of the problems that we have in Italy is that Italy is mostly positioned on mature businesses and innovative sectors play a minor role. We try to make some statistics and try to, to understand exactly which is the contribution. It's difficult to say, but it's something that is ranging between 2 and 5 percent. Second problem we have is that, uh, it was mentioned before, uh, the backbone of Italy are small and medium enterprises. Maybe we can say small and micro enterprises because 95 percent of our firms are, have less than 10 employees. And uh, so we probably lack of uh, scale economics. That's a problem that we have. Uh, talking about the industrial profile, so we are mostly a uh, county of small companies. Second thing is we have uh, this company are not equally distributed all over Italy that are mostly concentrating in, uh, uh, in the northern part of the country. But we have also to say that the, land, the strip of land between Turin and Venice is probably one of the richest of the world. And uh, other things that is important to mention is uh, agglomeration economies still play a role. So districts, we, we listed around 120 districts, including techno clusters. And uh, the mindset. So we still, uh, family business still has a relevant role. Uh, and uh, the typical mindset of in Italy is uh, companies are mostly lifelong enterprises, company-style companies. 
and uh, um, there is a scarce attitude to grow. And so sort of entrepreneurship uh, exit are concepts that are not so frequent in the mindset of our people and it's something we are work on. But, but something is changing. Uh, if we take a look at some numbers, we can see that uh, annually over 100 uh, companies spin off, spun off from universities. There is uh, a lot of initiatives, like the, the one that, as Amanda Bridge, we organize, but also startup initiative we mentioned before, uh, Telecom Italia Working Capital. There's a lot of initiatives that are trying to foster innovation and startup in Italy. And hundreds of startups apply to these initiatives. And I think we can say that there is, that there is still exists a new wave of entrepreneurs that have a different mindset, and they can really change the positioning, the industrial position that I mentioned before. And these entrepreneurs share a global mindset, share a strong attitude to grow, share a strong passion and strong enthusiasm. And so these entrepreneurs can leverage something that is really strong in Italy, that is uh, a solid research and a solid knowledge base, based on the fact that as a country we invested a lot in the past into our educational system and we still have a research base that we can easily exploit. And what about venture capital? What about capital? I think that capital will follow. Obviously, if we compare today Italian venture capital industry to, to the U.S., so to the Silicon Valley, I think is not a fair game. So, you know, we invest uh, 200 million per year dollars uh, compared to over 11 million billion just in Silicon Valley. But we are in an immature industry, venture capital is still immature, probably still in its infancy, but it's growing. We are for slightly less than 400 innovative startups were founded in the last uh, three years. We are an invested, venture capital investor amount are growing by 40% every year, and also in 2009, despite the world financial crisis, 100 million euros were invested in venture capital and in startups. So this is a, a really, really uh, quick outlook or about the, some of the things that we will present in New York one month from now, uh, focusing on the problem we have. I think that. This, uh, this country can do it. We have some main issue to solve, and so we, there is a strong need of reforms, and something is happening. But where this reform has to, uh, to do? I think that there are two main things, two main problems to be solved. The first one is we have to work to make Italy a corporate haven. Uh, and so we need to work to reduce the legal and fiscal barriers to to entry the corporate market and to exit the corporate market. We need to be more tolerant with failure. And we need to reduce uh, the labor market rigidity and make it more and more flexible. Uh, we need to, to be more attractive for investors coming from abroad. And probably a one-stop shop could help a lot in this direction. So we need to make Italy a corporate heaven. On the other side, we need to make this industrial a landscape to scale up. We need to reduce the scope of firms. And so we need, uh, first of all, to change, to change the mindset. But I think that taking a look at the startup that we have in here and taking a look at the means that we will present outside, you will see that something is really changing on that side. We need to uh, incentivize equity investment as well as support the exit support uh, probably under financial perspective, under fiscal perspective, and also under a cultural perspective, because an exit in Italy is still perceived as a failure, and it is not true. And finally, we need to work and to go international, because uh, Italy is part of a global economy, and we need to be a fair player of that. So these are just a few highlights, and uh, we will have more and more in the white paper we are working on. And uh, now, in order to, to move from theory into practice, I think that the best thing we can do is to, to present a case study. And so I'm quite happy to have here today Francesco Starace. Francesco Starace is the CEO of uh, Energy Green Power. 
and I will briefly present what they are doing. So I think it's a good example of a new Italy that is coming out.